Hey guys, it's Drew with the Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the positive and negatives of selling coins under $1,000 and positive and negatives of selling coins over $1,000. Uh, we hope this video is informative and we hope you guys enjoy the coins. Now let's get this video started. So first, we're going to be talking about coins that we sell that are over $1,000. What's the positives and the negatives of doing that? And a few positives to name a few is that the coins a rare coin has more. It has a, you know a really a certain amount of population to it. Um, a lot of the coins that you're going to find that are that high of a specimen have really good details. Um, just very premium quality coins. A lot of them will be CSC approved. And over the long term of the you know of you owning a coin, um, they're going to be growing more in terms of their value, their collector value. So you know, say if you had a fifty dollar coin and a five hundred dollar coin, or a fifty dollar coin and a thousand dollar coin, um, and you know, numismatics have risen up so much in the past year and a half that you know, say coins that you bought for a thousand are now worth twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars, but the coins that you bought for fifty dollars a year and a half ago are now worth. $70, $80. So sometimes buying the best coins up front will make you the most money in the long term if you're ever going to go to resell them. Um, a few other uh, pluses is that, especially from a capital perspective, you have all of your capital tied up in that one coin. So you only have to find one buyer for that coin. If you were to sell $1,000 worth of coins and there's 20 of them, you might have to find 20 different buyers for, the, for those coins which will take a longer term time in the process. Um, but I guess a negative of this is that say I buy one coin like a trade dollar I'm about to show you. It's only one coin. If you buy the wrong coin, you might get you might lose some money. You have to buy a coin that's beautifully nice and original for its grade, coins that have a shot at CAC. A lot of things that you have to really understand to buy a thousand dollar plus coin. Um, just so when a collector sees it, they go, oh wow, this is a really nice coin. So, different waters for each coin. Um, thank you, Ice Maker. But, let's show you some of these coins real quick. A few that are near a thousand, one that's over a thousand, and just a few pretty cool coins that we got in recently. We'll show you those, and then we'll show you some that are under a thousand, that are kind of uh, a little bit more of modern coins. So, we're going to talk a little bit about more expensive coins first. Yes, all these are not over a thousand dollars and some aren't even close to a thousand dollars but i like sharing coins but you know it's just the way it goes with this channel and we're going to share off these two coins first because they are the closest to a thousand dollars this is an 1865 indian head scent graded ms64 red brown by ngc and as you can tell the quality's there uh the luster's there and you'll find that with a lot of you know newer coins as well like franklin's like kennedy's a lot of different things like that but you won't find the rarity I'm going to post the rarity just right under this coin right now to show you guys that this coin's a little bit tougher, very hard to find, um, and you're going to end up paying a premium for it. I think this coin is, uh, you know, around $650 uh, if you're going to go buy it. And, you know, having this coin close to red looking as well is also a good plus when you're out buying stuff like this, and that's kind of why I bought it. I just really like the color on the coin, and, you know, when you're like I said, when you're buying stuff like this, you're going to want that rarity, especially if it's going to demand a huge premium. Um, and that huge premium being, you know, six, seven hundred dollars, close to a thousand dollar coin, um, just like this coin right here. This is an 1875 CC um, trade dollar. And uh, let me just bust it out of the plastic real quick. That's much better. Well, if you guys heard what I was saying earlier about. You know, there's that rarity that we're that we're seeing on this coin. But also, say if you only had a thousand dollars in your budget, right? And or say you had just enough to buy this coin. It, it's a nice coin. It has a lot of perks about it. It has a lot of people that would be interested as a collector. But sometimes it's just the one trick pony. This is all it is. You got to find the right customer for it. And sometimes if you only have a certain amount of capital, you really should stay away from certain coins like this. You want to offer a variety when people come into your coin shop. Or when you have inventory to show off at a show. Sometimes buying the thousand dollar coin just depends on the season of life you are as a dealer. And you know, we are so fortunate enough with all you guys that do so much for us in terms of just watching our videos 
and checking out coins like this that we really are very thankful for uh, just the opportunity to buy coins like this and offer them to you but let me show you guys a few other coins that we are kind of showing off in this video nothing that's super pricey but uh, a lot of you know pretty interesting and diverse group of coins here are you guys enjoying today's video so far if you are please leave a like comment your thoughts about coins under a thousand coins over a thousand uh, what, what's your experience with those if you sell them or collect them um, and subscribe if you're new new videos every week go check out our website if you're interested in any of the coins we had today and our new podcast the freedom podcast or the freedom coin show podcast my bad link down below though let's get back to today's episode starting off with the more original type coins here we have the 1903 uh, barber quarter grade au50 by pcgs i have a big collector that's into these trent and i'm going to Hold this one for him to see what he thinks of it in person. Maybe I can film that for you guys whenever we have a chance. But super nice original crusty piece. I uh, really do enjoy this one. Hope Trent does as well. Uh, here's another coin that we have. Oh, there's a mosquito, man. But here's an 1897 Barber Quarter. Great XF45 by PCGS. A few things have happened to this coin on the way. Don't think it has a shot at CAC. But if we're to take a look, man, that mosquito is just going to be uh, on our episode, isn't it? Got a few spots here behind the head, under the ear, and on the face. And have, like, I think it might be a little bit of light cleaning or just kind of toning right where you see the stars. But, you know, still a pretty nice coin. Wouldn't send the CAC, but still has all the bells and whistles. Kind of the grade that you're looking for, especially when buying kind of a mid-tier Barber Quarter. Uh, pretty nice XF coin for sure. Here's another coin that we picked up this week. Been buying the Commems like crazy. Thank you guys for the support on those. This is uh, a Cleveland, and this coin is in a Rattler holder. The reason why I like this one so much is because it has that really nice blinding luster to it. Really nice and original piece. Um, you know, and just nothing that's really taking away from its eye appeal. And, you know, like what we've been talking about, holders have been really steadily increasing over the past year and a half. Very thankful for that because I really do enjoy the numismatic history behind everything. Here is an interesting kind of red field holder uh, piece dollar. The thing I like about this coin so much is because it has all this rainbow rim toning around it. And I think it's just being in this holder so long, that's what happens to it. But Ray Edmund State 62 by NGC. Had to send this one in myself. Had it for so long in the back of the safe. And now we're able to offer it to you guys. And you can see a little bit of that rainbow rim toning. I'm going to try to show you guys a little bit more of this on the website. AkushaCollectibles.com. Give you guys a better perspective on this one. And... Uh, who knows, you might pick this one up for your collection. A few Redfield guys out there haven't really offered too many in the past. Didn't really know too much about them, but starting to research a little bit more with those. Got another 1936 Cleveland here. Great MS65 by NGC. Really like that uh, you know, green label. Kind of thicker holder here. Really like that. And I enjoy the kind of the originality like we were talking about earlier. This one's a little bit better of a higher and higher grade here. It's MS65. And I ended up paying the same exact price for this one and the Rattler. That's kind of because of the Rattler premium that you guys see with many coins. Here is an Elgin commemorative. that uh, you know We've actually sold one of these in the past and been trying to find a replacement that's been in a Rattler holder. This one has a little bit of kind of uh, you know, a little shading or something. I think someone tried to clean this holder. And um, still pretty nice commemorative here. Don't see too many issues with the coin. A little bit of rubbing on the high high points. I think that's a little bit of a problem for me. A few spots, but still pretty nice and uh, beautiful commemorative. This is a tough type coin from what I've heard. I never actually started a type book before, to be completely honest. But if you guys take a look at this coin, this is 1859 uh, Indian head scent. It has a little kind of reddish toning to it, but still a brown just because it is circulated. Uh, a little bit of an older holder as well. You can kind of see that because people kind of mistreated the holder a little bit. A little bit of rubbing on uh, the front and back here. But in mint state, this coin goes for you know $1,000 plus. So getting one at AU58 is just that middle of the road. You can offer it to somebody for their set. We're going to offer this one for $360, bucks, which is not too bad at all. Uh, you know, I think I had a guy reach out to me and said that he's trying to put a few in his type set. So... Uh, Go check this one out too. Have a few better uh, looking photos on the website. Uh, moving into a little bit better date, uh, Walking Liberty half here. 
you know, we're trying to stay in the XF range, VF range, that's a little bit higher, and then the AU and MS. 38D is a little bit of a tougher date, especially for the Walker series. So wanted to get that for you guys um, if you guys wanted to take a look at it and are assembling a Walker set. And my goal really is to help anybody, um, especially whatever they want to collect, either if it's older, uh, you know, U.S. type, or they want to move into kind of the younger U.S. type as well, which we're going to be talking about, which is the Franklins, Kennedys, all that stuff. We want to be the one-stop shop for everybody. That's our goal. But super nice piece here. I think it's, you know, not as original as you'd see with most, but still a nice quality XF. Here is a Barber Quarter. This one is a 1914 Barber Quarter. And uh, has some still remaining luster on the coin. Don't think this coin would cack. But buying the nice AUs with a little bit of luster still remaining really does uh, set it off for me. Really like that part. Uh, you're just not getting into expensive MS territory. You're on that kind of that little bit edge between having kind of a you know a little bit of a lackluster coin to a really nice luster coin that's a little bit more expensive. So the AU58 range sometimes is where I like to stay, especially when messing with uh, you know the newer ki kinds of coins that I like to, to work on, which is the Barbers. Don't really buy them too often, but Trent really got me hooked in this past month, and I'm really excited to show you guys more when we get them in. This is a 1879S uh, Morgan Dollar with a reverse of a 78. It's a top 100 VAM, a little bit tougher to get, especially in higher grades, but another middle of the road coin for you guys to take a look at. NGC grade, this one XF40, and just look at that. I mean, I like the coin a lot. I want to get one in a higher grade one day and offer it because it is a little bit more of a tougher variety to find. And uh, I always like finding Morgans that really look nice. And I like this one a little bit just because it has that variety to it. But thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Let's move on to a little bit of the newer stuff. The stuff that's a little bit more affordable for an everyday collector. You guys will enjoy that part as well. So we just talked about selling big coins. But now we're going to talk about the positives and the negatives of selling small coins. Uh, here is what we just got in the mail. This is all from uh, someone that we basically bought out their kind of modern collection. And uh, it's, it's pretty interesting to see all these. I'm going to pull them out real quick and then we're going to talk about them. Give you guys a few you know, positives and negatives like I was talking about of selling coins for under $1,000. But let's show you guys these coins. So a few pluses of buying coins for under a thousand dollars are, uh, you know, if you just look at this this stack here, there's more variety. So I could sell someone out of the stack a Kennedy, a Morgan, a Franklin, all different grades, all different uh, kind of designations. Some are FBL, um, you know, some are bicentennial. There's a whole different type of variety that you can get when you uh, spend cheaper on stuff, and. Uh, you can also buy more of volume. So say if you wanted to buy 10 of these or 15 of these, you could spend under $1,000 doing that. Um, so like I said, it does give you that more of a variety, um, but it's the rarity is a little bit lower when you're thinking about it, right? How many uh, 1962 MS63 FBL Franklins are out there? A lot, there's a ton of them. So when someone's looking at rarity for coins under $1,000, I wouldn't really, uh, see a coin as rare for under a thousand dollars in most cases unless it's like that 1927s dime that we shared a few uh, weeks back so from a dealer perspective uh what, what's kind of challenging is that the premium is pretty low on a lot of these so for me i make maybe three dollars to six dollars on each one of these coins rather than having a big coin and sell it at a larger premium say you know on most of these coins i'm making either like 10 15 percent and that could be, like I said, three to six dollars. But if you're making ten to fifteen percent on a thousand dollar coin, you're making a hundred dollars, hundred fifty dollars. And sometimes that's a little bit easier to do. 
But with these, like I said, there's many people that are willing to pick these up. They're affordable, they're nice looking. I'm about to show you them. Um, and but, but from a dealer perspective, sometimes the premium can be a little lighter, um, but they can move pretty fast. You can fill up a lot of your box, you know, if you're going to the US Postal Service with a lot of these packages because um, just really nice early starter coins, um, you know, and sometimes it just depends on what collector you're kind of uh, working with. Are you working with a collector that likes to spend under a thousand or above a thousand? So uh, when you're a dealer and you're thinking about, you know, buying coins over a thousand dollars or under a thousand dollars, just understand that there's two different types of clients that want to uh, work on two different types of things. Um, and the thing about coins that are, uh, you know, pretty affordable like this is, is that that you can only really go so far into the series um, before it kind of tampers out. And what I mean by that is, you know, this guy almost has a full set of Franklins, has half a set of Kennedys, and they're all pretty nice grades, all pretty nice luster, but I'm thinking he wants to do something more. Wants to buy, uh, you know, a bigger coin or buy uh, something that's kind of a little bit more rare. And you can't really do that with some of these coins. And so I think that was the major part of why uh, the guy sold these to us. He wanted to kind of buy a more interesting, higher grade Morgan and use those funds to kind of find something else possibly for his collection. So just a few things for you guys to think about with coins under $1,000. Uh, but let me actually just show you guys a few of them. And uh, yeah, you'll really enjoy these. And once again, I wanted to show you guys all this stuff a little bit more common than you would normally see. But look at just the beauties that he picked out. The best thing about buying a collection sometimes is seeing exactly what they chose for their collection. This guy was very choosy, very uh, you know picky about what he wanted for his collection. And you guys are really going to see that in this video. I've looked through probably a thousand, two thousand Franklins and, oh sorry, and I've never seen stuff like this in terms of just how picky he was. But let me show you guys a few and you're going to see it basically by luster and just by eye appeal here. I mean. As you can see, there's just a little, little few polish lines here, but look at the luster on this coin. Very strong, no spots on it, and it's going to be the same exact story with a lot of these, as you can see. Um, you know, just stunning pieces, 54S and FBL, uh, you know, a little bit of a tougher date sometimes to get with FBL. Wow, I mean, a little bit of spotting on this one, but still, the luster, the eye appeal is just there, especially for... You know, a little bit of a lower grade coin. 61 in FPO. Wow, good luck finding luster like this on one of those as well. I mean, all of these have just picked out choice coins. I, I'm guessing he sent in a few himself, but he also wanted to see, you know, if he could find a few. Um, but I think a lot of these, I think he sent in himself. But just really immaculate coins. Stunning. Like, look at this coin. Man, these are the kind of coins you want to buy if they're a little bit more common. Just ones that are cream of the crop, what well, I would say. This one's got a little toning on it that he kind of prefaced up front. But still, I mean, pretty cool coin here. Um, you know, you're going to get a little bit bored, I'm sure, with all these. But let me move on to the next ones here. I wanted to show off this last Franklin uh, before we move on to some Kennedys. But, I mean, look at this coin. Pretty strong. And 64 plus FBL is a little bit tougher. FBLs past 60 are going to be the ones that you're going to have to look out for. Especially if you want to, you know, find one, you know, FBLs in, in 60 or higher, just tougher to find overall. Tougher for, for you to get, just because the dies were kind of beat up back then. And so when you find FBLs like that, that's pretty cool. A lot of strong, a lot of strong coins here. But thank you very much, Fernando, for helping us out with these. Really do enjoy them. Now, if we start looking at some Kennedys here, look at that. Same story. Stunning luster. Very few uh, marks on the coin in, in the places that matter, like the face and the shield here. I mean, just, wow, immaculate pieces. He, he really knew what he was doing, even down to the bicentennial here. You take a look at the bicentennial, just strong, super strong, super good here. I mean, uh, wow. It, this type of stuff makes you want to keep these, man. I'm telling you, these things are cool. Man, I love them a lot. But, you know, I think these coins really do resonate with a lot of people. All those, all these Kennedys look the same. All these Franklins look the same. And we still have some Franklins over here, still pretty strong. I mean, you got a 60D, 64 FPL. 
Um, pretty nice luster. Only a few here have kind of a little bit of a few spots, but that's just something that happens. You know, you're just trying to fill a set, and uh, you know, you run across a few of these until you get a better one. And you know, 62D FBL. A lot of the better dates here in FBL, and so. You know, coins like this, though, when you're looking through many coins, you're going to try to pick out stuff like this because, A, the luster's nice, um, and you'll kind of resonate with other people that like the same thing. Because if I was to bring these to someone that's collecting Franklins or Kennedys, a lot of them are going to say, I really like these coins more than the ones that you'd find that are a little bit more hazy or have spots or were graded later. A lot of these were graded earlier as well. It's just really unique. And we have two Morgan dollars that he sent in. Uh, a little bit of toning on the obverse here, and then when you flip it over, this is kind of the cool part. It's got like a rainbow, almost bubble that happened on the reverse. And 1881P is a little bit tougher of a date to find with toning, but you know it's just a little bit of character that he had that we had to the coin here. Still has really nice luster intact on the reverse. A little bit of dingy on the obverse, which probably gave it that grade with a little bit of the hits that you can see, but still pretty strong. This is an 1878S. Morgan Dollar with kind of like fireball toning on the obverse. A little bit of underlying luster still on the coin as well. But Fernando really knew what he was doing. Picked out a really nice set of coins here. And I'm so glad to be able to talk to you just a little bit about them. Give you guys a little bit of backstory on, you know, the set. And a few coins for you guys to look at. But if you guys are interested in any of these, AcousticCollectibles.com. We can help you out with all these. And, uh, you know, if you guys are looking for a set as well, just let us know. We'll try to find something like this to help you out with. Did you guys enjoy today's video? If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. It really grows our community and our reach. Uh, we just want to reach more new just out there, get them inspired to go to shows, meet dealers, do everything that they do. Uh, and then we also, if you guys could, comment your thoughts. What do you think about the points that we had to share about uh, over a thousand dollar coins, under a thousand dollar coins. Uh, you know, it's it's important to get your perspective as well. Please add the points you have below, and subscribe if you're new. Got videos coming out every single week. Going to be at the Broken Arrow Coin Show uh, this weekend coming up. So, if you guys can stop on by there, we'd love to meet you, buy some coins, sell some coins, whatever we can do to help you out in your experience. And we will see you guys in the next video.